Hey folks, Ray from DCAmerica.com here. Today we do a bit of an open water test between the Garmin Phoenix 5 Plus and the Sunto 9. Uh, so head to head. And this is one area that Sunto said that they've, they believe they've got the most accurate swim watch on the market. So I'm gonna test that. Um, and so this is a final unit with final firmware. Uh, this is on July, or not July, June 28th, 29th, something like that. Um, all the final firmware, it's now shipping to customers on the Sunto 9. The same is true of the Phoenix 5 Plus, also on the latest firmware, um, and it's shipping out to folks today. Uh, so a couple things. One is that I'm basically just gonna swim like down that away ways and then back again i'm not gonna go too far out into the water because uh there's boats and while i have my little like buoy thing to boats see me i really don't want to don't want to like lose that battle nonetheless um two i know from some previous swims of the phoenix 5 plus that it's doing some weird stuff um in particular i've seen it go ahead and basically not tell me this distance until i stop and raise my wrist above the water and let it catch up um even though the distance is correct it just it's weird i don't i don't like that um it's not the way past watches used to to work and then two i've also in some cases seen that it won't plot the dots unless i do that whole stopping thing so i'm not going to do that uh, minus the turnaround i'm basically going to go down around this marina swoop back along the shoreline and keep on going i don't know what the, that sound was sorry um and so then i'm going to stop there i'll double check watch it's still working and come back uh we will be able to see though because my swim line won't be perfectly straight if something isn't right then we'll know that it's just like cutting corners and stuff like that meanwhile on the sunto side i've also seen some weirdness above water i haven't done a lot of like any uh swimming with the sunto 9 so this is sort of the first test to see how they work uh and it's just gonna be like i'm just gonna swim i'm not gonna just gonna see how the watches work out and then on the top of the buoy here is a 935 that's gonna be recording a one second intervals um for the gps tracks so this is considered a reference uh, it floats above the surface right behind me this is like well established as like one of the best if not the best ways to get a swim track um while you're swimming that way there's no interruption here or anything like that it's just clean it'll tell me exactly where we went uh the entire time so there you go i will go to the other end i'll swim we'll do a quick check down there and uh then we'll come back and I'll look at the data online and the analyzer to see how things actually looked on the tracks with that let's get going Okay, so here we are at the turnaround. It's about 12 minutes into it. I'm about 620 yards, 618 yards on the Phoenix 5 Plus, and on the Sunto, 690 yards. Um, so that's actually jumped a bunch in the last like couple minutes because, not minutes, sorry, a couple seconds because when I first start, stopped here, it was showing like 620, and then now it's jumped a bunch. I lift my hammock up again, see if it stays put where it should be. Okay, good, it's staying put it at 690 so it's always a good test to like stick your hand underwater for a moment and see if something will increase because there's been bugs in the past on watches you know soon those watches especially we're just putting my hand like this out of the water and then treading water causes the um, distance to bump up when you bring it back up again but staying nice and put on 690 so that's good i'm assuming that's found gps so there's and over here this one's still climbing which is exactly the problem I was talking about where um, it was taking a while to accumulate the distance. So now these two are really close. It's a 701 versus the 713. So it is climbing a little bit over here. Some imperfections there. Uh, but at least they're not in the same ballpark. Garmin's at 705. So within 10 yards, which isn't too bad. But of course, the real proof in the pudding will be once I swim back. So on the way here, I basically. Where you see like there's boats way down there, you probably can't see it all, but we'll play it pretend you can. I follow the shoreline back to here, staying within 10 to 20 meters of the shoreline, depending on what the surface looks like underneath the water. On the way back, I'm gonna try to just straight shot it all the way across. That way you can make it easier to see on the map. Hopefully the straight shot. In any case, I'm gonna head swim on my back and uh, we'll check the results afterwards. Okay, let me finish up. Garmin still says 865 right now. So I'm gonna get a couple seconds to find satellites and see if it's not for 17. But now I'm gonna stop because I'm calling that tough nuggets. Uh, just clearing through a thousand right there. My guess is it'll continue. The track will be right, but the distance will be wrong. You can see here, 1553, which is just about where I expect to be. So I'm gonna stop that one as well. And then go back to the swim buoy. And this is at 0.66 miles. Uh, so that's the lap distance. Stop that. See the total distances here. Down, save. 
Um, so we'll just see afterwards what the tracks look like and see what's right, what's wrong. But I'm pretty sure that the Garmin track will be right, but the distance will probably be wrong. So anyways, let's head back inside and see how it works. Okay, so here we are inside. Now that I've gone ahead and downloaded all the data, um, we got all three data sets, the 4935, which is in the swim buoy that you're looking at right there. Then we have the Sunto 9. Um, and then finally, after that, we have the Phoenix 5 Plus, all three of those data sets separately. Now I'm going to start off with the swim buoy first because this is the data that's the most correct. Uh, you can see it's 0.66 miles. Uh, and I went ahead and I validated that against uh, another data set. So I basically just took like a map drawing and kind of worked my way through to make sure it looks the same and that the distance was correct. Indeed, that is correct, so 0.66 miles. And you'll see it's pretty much exactly where I swam. As I go down here, I looped and kind of went close to the shoreline, past the marina, and then down here I stopped for a minute, uh, float a little bit down the river, you could say, and then turn around to straight shot back, back past the marina, up to the end. You end up my start and end points are right next to each other. So that looks pretty good. Overall good stuff there. But of course this is on the buoy, so it's above the water the entire time and not really in open water swim mode. You'll see it's actually in running mode, uh, which is the way to ensure that you're getting the one second recording rate. Next, we'll look at the Sunto 9 track. Um, now, you can see here a couple things. Uh, one, the, the data points are much less updated. Uh, so the start point is up here near the shoreline where I started. And I kind of wandered through here. It cuts across the dock, which obviously I didn't do. But that's not horrible. I came within a few meters of it, so it's, it's not a big deal. Uh, but then here, it shows me beaching onto the ground, which, of course, I didn't do either. Um, and then you can see that happens again down here. And overall, while it plots the general idea of where I swam in general, it's not really that precise, especially by open water swim standards. And then most importantly, you'll notice right there, it ends a couple hundred yards away from the shore. Even though you saw at the end of the video, I didn't stop that watch uh, until some period of time after I'd stopped swimming. So we're short by, by a chunk here. But then on top of that, you look at the distance and it shows 1,731 yards. So as a reminder, 0.66 miles is nowhere near 1,700 yards. It's about six or about 1,100 yards. So it's quite, quite different there. Um, so the distance is over, even though the track actually doesn't look horrible. Instead, they've added distance here and different ports there. And of course, it's missing that. So that's not a deal. Then finally, we have the Phoenix 5 Plus. And as you can see, that is nothing other than like a gigantic dumpster fire. Um, that right there, the, the tracks, I don't even know how to, you can just see it. It looks horrendous. It looks like my two-year-old can draw better than this. Um, as you can see, it starts off. I go out with the channel. I get run over by a boat. I then come back into the marina over here. I'm on the boats. I'm then all over the place. I'm then in the fields. Uh, I then get to the, the finish point, which or the uh, midpoint, which is good. And then again, we're back in the channel. This boat probably also runs me over again. Uh, it's just a complete mess. And you'll see actually on this straight shot coming back, this is basically it. So it does like one data point right there where I stop for a second, double check, and otherwise it ends back in the same place. Interestingly though, the distance is almost correct. It's actually in the ballpark there. So very, very close there. But the track itself is crap. To overlay all three of those on top of each other, we have the DCR analyzer here. And you can see it's a bit tough to see this one because of the coloring of the satellite imagery and the coloring shows in the graphs. But right now, you can see that blue line there is the Phoenix 5 all over the place. The reddish maroon line is the Sunto 9. That's certainly a bit all over the place, but roughly plots the general track of the 935 in the swim buoy. Again, though, keep in mind that it ends right there. If we look at the kind of summary data right here, you can sort of see the distances. So in the swim buoy, which is the reference data, 1.06k. The Phoenix 5 Plus is 0.92k, so pretty darn close. For, for open water swim, you're generally looking at about uh, plus or minus 10% is kind of the, the average rule of thumb for the last you know three to five years. And then the Sunto 9 is 1.42k. But none of these are that good. In fact, all of these, um, in terms of all the wrist ones, are bad. They're not They're not really usable, not really what I would expect from uh, an open water swim watch in 2018. I've seen better tracks from both companies over the past uh, five to eight years. And so it's a bit of a bummer to see both companies regress a bit. In the case of Garmin, uh, this is kind of what I've seen on the Phoenix 5 Plus on a couple other swims that I did with less data. Um, but it just wasn't good. As you saw in the video, it didn't count properly while I was swimming. So I got to, you know, as I was swimming, I couldn't actually see how far I'd swam until I got to the point where I stopped, and then I had to wait for this like hourglass timer to finish. It just was stupid. And in the case of the Sunto 9, it did give me the data mid-swim, but the track wasn't good, and then it stopped randomly a couple hundred meters away from the end in terms of where the track is, and of course the distance is 50% more than the others. 
So I think at this point in time, both units are a bit premature on swimming. Um, now I have seen good swim data from both units as well. Uh, so in the case of Sundo, for example, I've seen um, the 5K runner uh, did a swim test and, and his track looked uh, decent, not like great, but decent, acceptable, I would say. Uh, and then Sundo itself, um, one of the lead product managers of uh, this division, in fact, the lead product manager of this division, uh, swam this past weekend in uh, Ironman Finland and his track looks beautiful as well from that event. So I have seen some good tracks on the Sunto 9, and the same is true on uh, the Phoenix 5. I have seen some good tracks as well that are pretty clean, but there were also easier tracks, though this is pretty darn easy. So we'll see what happens. Uh, I certainly plan to do more swimming here, and I know some people say, well, why don't you swim another three or four times? And here's the thing. Both these products are shipping at this point in time, and honestly, I'm kind of sick of doing testing for these companies. Like, this this is not hard. This is a swim with, with nothing above me, no, like, complexities. This is as open as you get. There's no excuse for a and having this wrong. In the case of Sunto, it shouldn't have failed this way either. Uh, so uh, these companies need to step it up from a testing standpoint and not release products until they're ready to go. Anyways, if you found this interesting, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom. Don't forget to check out my full Phoenix 5 Plus in-depth review and then my Sunto 9 preview. I'd like to do a full Sunto 9 in-depth review a little bit later in July. They just started shipping last week, uh, so it's a bit of a newer product versus Garmin's was a couple weeks ago. Have a good one.